Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's your pal Impossibum here, and we're back for another dose of Epic Tavern. So let's just hop right into it. And if you're not up to date on our uh, little adventure here, I'll have a link down in the description to get you guys caught up. We have a playlist. You can just go through and sequentially, and you'll catch up to what we're doing. See, last episode, we got a named character, uh, Amelia, who was the uh, rat necromancer, if you remember that. Uh, it's it's been probably about a week since I played this, so I might be a little little behind of what's going on, you know, a little forgetful, but we'll figure it out. Let's see what quest you want to do here. Um, we can upgrade our tavern if we do this one, so I think I'll go with that. I think I want to try out Evelyn. Uh, oh, did I say a Evelyn or Amelia before? But it's Amelia. I don't know. I don't remember, but it's Amelia. So we'll join with her. Can we, I guess we, uh, can we give her anything? Do we have anything? Wand of Dancing Flames. Fire Magic plus two. Well, maybe we'll just give her, I mean, I don't think she does fire magic. So I'll just give her a uh, Siren Sting here. See what kind of armor we got for her here. There's no armor we have, apparently. Uh, that's not, a, not being used currently, at least. And what's this one? Ring of Persuasion. Uh, let's see what this one does. An enchanted ring gifted to the tavern by a merchant saved by Ravager 4. Persuasion plus 3. And this one is apparently an expensive one. This creepy necklace features a single unblinking eyeball that constantly scans your surroundings for signs of danger. Perception plus 4. Oh, that's, I'm sure that'll be useful some way, somehow. Um, do we have... We should put the... Wand of Dancing Flames on Morgul, because she's a fire mage, right? I mean, that only makes sense. What's our barbarian have here? Nothing, apparently. Well, I can give him... Huh. I think I'd rather him have that. And we can we can give Edna something else. Alright, so this... Yes, okay. Remove it from Edna. Is this just not updating or something? It's not showing them having it here. Maybe I can just put, like, nothing. Whatever you have, take it off. I I don't know. For some reason, I'm not allowed to unequip her. I'm not sure what the deal is there, if I'm being honest. I'd like to just... I don't know. But we're going to stop messing with it. We're going to actually get into doing stuff here. So let's get Amelia, our new person here. Uh, this one needs a close range, apparently, is the important bit. So who has good close range? Let's see here. He has 9 close range. 13. I think we'll go with her. She's a good one. 3. 18. He's a good close range guy. What's, what's Amelia have? I didn't even look. Oh, she's a good close range person too. Um, I think we only need two of them. Maybe we can knock out you know two quests with one stone. We'll, uh, we'll give that a go. We're still good for that one, so we'll accept on that one. Accept. And what's this one? What's this one need? This one needs social, befriend. Do we have a, a good socialite here? He has five, two. Our Edna is our socialite. She'll go in there. She has an okay chance, but she needs some backup. And these two, or neither of them, are very good at that. But we'll throw it in there, and it turns into an okay. So we'll see. Uh, said accept on that one. What'd this one say? Did it say we're okay? Overall chances, good. Okay, well, we'll give it a go. We're going to go forth. There's too much talking and setting things up for the beginning of a video. My apologies. Let's get going. Upgrade your wine cellar. Chapter 1. Get the funk out. There's a foul odor emanating from the newly cleared cellar. Thick layers of mold pollute the air, and there's a particularly large patch of goo in the corner that appears to be moving. Uh, apparently, we're going to fight like a slime monster or something. I don't know. The heroes spot an elderly priest struggling to maneuver a small hand cart through the mud. Bump and Amelia step in to help, lifting the cart onto a more solid ground. Blessings upon you, brave adventurers, the priest says. Okay. Um, apparently that just happened. We didn't even have to, like, roll or anything. 
The heroes wrap dish rags around their faces to help block out the toxic fumes as they head downstairs to confront a decade of accumulated crud. Uh, apparently they just need 12 and we already aced it. <laughs> they needed close range combat for that? That just seems kind of silly. Okay, let's see what it says here. A furry orange pile of crud creeps towards Bump who shrieks in a most undig <laughs> undignified fashion while Amelia destroys it. After a couple of hours of stomping and scrubbing, this tavern cellar is vastly improved. Okay, forward downward. And pro approaching Impossible's Hole. I'm so hungry I could eat a roast centaur, Bump says as Impossible's Hole comes into view in the distance. The kitchen crew will earn their money tonight. This is kind of funny, because I think they're just downstairs in the cellar, so they're just coming up the stairs. It's not something coming from the distance. But, you know, uh, the quest doesn't know that. Okay, well, that, that was a pretty easy win. We got our little wrap-up here. There's nothing spectacular happened there, other than I, we probably unlocked the cellar. Hey, everyone. Sorry for the interruption here. I'm new to YouTube, and I just need all the help I can get. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel, smash that like button, and leave a comment down below. It helps more than you know. Uh, thanks, everyone. See, The Lost Menagerie, Chapter 1, The Code Breaker. The heroes spend some time going over Alfred's lab notes, but can't make a lick of sense out of any of it. Much appears to be gibberish, and other pages have words that swim across the page, changing their configuration every few seconds. Time for a visit to Morbid Curiosities. You must have some kind of weird... Uh, Cipher spell on it or something. A chill morning breeze whips through the city streets. Better bring a second layer. Okay, apparently it's a little chilly out. A portal abruptly opens in front of the heroes, and a being shifted in and out of the party, party sensory range begins to assault the heroes' minds with unthinkable paradoxes. Well, do we have Grumpf here? Was it Grunson? One of them's really good at like riddles and weird things. Let's see. Okay, he, he rolled good. I just need you to be precise here. There we go. We got through it. Let's see what it says here. Grunson, ever the quick study, absorbs enough of the being's language to debate its unknowable postulations, albeit in a rudimentary manner. Surprised and apparently impressed, the entity withdraws its own dimension. To its own dimension. Sorry. Uh, okay, well, we won the rolls. Let's go back. At a crossroads, the party meets a man who claims that every word he speaks is a lie. Okay. Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do about that. Roll my... <laughs> fail my roll, apparently. Horribly, horribly bad. All right. Really, more glass? Yes, says the man. But wait, that clearly wasn't a lie. Unless you're lying about that. About always. Hmm. Well, apparently, we'll never know the trickery that goes on there because we failed. Continuing onward, the heroes fill Ignatius on, in on the situation and hand him piles and piles of notes that they fear may be nonsense. The collector retrieves a monocle from his jacket pocket and affixes it while examining the notes. Magically encrypted, he says. Encrypted was the word I was looking for before, but now we found it. Um, okay, do, do we have to do something? We'll just balance it out here. All right, we're, we're already passed. We got a heroic roll. Grunson for the win. Lunacy, Ignatius says. He believed he could create a temporal bubble by destroying an epic crystal while holding a lost menagerie artifact. He hoped to use his bubble to access the car carnival undetected car yeah, in its home dimension to rescue Isabella. I mean, it makes sense the other theoretically, and I do have an epic crystal in stock, but apparently we're gonna, something weird is going to happen. They're going to get into weird crystal stuff. Let's see. A group of elven knights confronts the heroes on the road, claiming to be searching for a bandit. Typical human, one of the knights mutters. Is this a social? Oh, let's see. Fail. Fail. I, I bet you this is a fail. Fail. Before Morgul can interject, Edna takes off running. The knights are about to give chase when Morgul says, If you want her, you'll have to go through me. They are happy to oblige. Morgul has taken 9 HP damage. Well, aren't we, like, you know, 
Big bad adventurers? Let's just beat them up. Should have been a close uh, combat uh, check. Survival. A stone gargoyle falls off a building and clobbers Edna on the head. The merchant needs immediate first aid. Ooh. This one's cursed and infused. He's inspired and invincible. Huh. I don't, I don't know how he got the invincible role, but I'll take that. Morgan's level is too high for the quest. I've I never even noticed that before. Does that mean I get like worse rolls or something? I don't know. Anyway, let's roll. That was that was excellent roll, and I only got two for it. There we go. That worked. Yeah, none of those other ones actually helped very much. But Grunson for the win yet again. While untrained in first aid, Morgul manages to do a serviceable job, a serviceable job in bandaging the wound, heading off further complications. Okay. We're on our way back home. Probably only have... This is probably the last uh, encounter before we finish. Edna and Grunson have a difference of opinion regarding who should lead the party on the next quest. They get into a brawl. Okay. Wow, what, a, what an epic roll right there. Edna lands a clean left hook and immediately feels awful, begging for forgiveness. The heroes agree that maybe it's best to not have a leader. Yeah, maybe. Especially if that's how they're going to act about it. Oh, let's see here. Sludging through the mud, the heroes round the final bend in the road and see Impossibum's hole up ahead. I'm never walking again, Morgul groans. Apparently this was too much of a walk for Morgul. She only seemed to go like across town or something, but apparently it was just too much to bear. All right, let's see what happens. You can do it, load screen. We got beers and, and kebabs to uh, to fill. Orders to fill, rather. Mouths to fill, stomachs to fill. There's there's filling going on somewhere. I'm, I'm sure of it. Okay, let's go to the menu. And I think we're going to take meat off the menu and add the Ravager because, you know, we, we had the... Uh, we went on a quest for it, and it's named after, you know, our parents that, like, died and stuff, so might as well do that. Stale bread does not seem like a good thing to do. Voodoo doll cookies? Pe people apparently like those. They don't cost very much, though. I think I'll, like, bring those up a little bit. Let's see, diary act kebabs? They don't like that one either? Well, what else can we give them? You want barbecue rat? We'll give them barbecue rat, because that's what they want. I'll leave it the same price. Not like we're going to be making bank off a barbecue rat. Or at least I hope not. It's a little scary. All right. What's our uh, supplies look like here? Um, let's see. Manage goods. We're not selling meat. Let's look, look over the menu things because uh, those are the ones that matter. We don't have any barbecue rat, so I'll probably have to take that off the menu until we actually have it. What else do we have here? What's on the menu? Voodoo cookie dolls? I don't have those in stock either. So I'm a dope. I need to take those off the menu. And this one, we at least have it. All right. Maybe I'll leave the other ones on the menu for now so I don't have to mess with it. We'll get them tomorrow anyway. Open doors. Wine cellar level two. Oops. Hit my mic. Never mind that noise. Everything is okay. Your level 2 wine cellar allows your tavern to stock up to 5 different beverages. Stock up to 5 types of drink. Well, I will get around to it. What's this one do? No, Nobody's in need of that. Okay. I was just, you know, curious. Oh, so we actually have to spend money to build these? Can we manage it? What happens when we manage that? Stock up to X types of food. Okay, apparently we need to do a quest before we unlock more things. And we need more money to upgrade the wine cellar. So apparently we just need more money all around the horn. That's all there is to that one. Let's talk to Gerg here. Hey, I wanted to talk to you. Okay, Gerg. As far back as I've re I can recall, I've been terrified of fire. Well, you're a fire mage. You kind of got into the line, uh, line of, wrong line of work here. You know, something's not quite right there. You know, I've never actually looked at these things before. I feel like they're new or something. But now we have a little uh, tab down here of what we've done and how horrible we've done. Let's talk to Grunson here. 
It's training time! Okay, Grudson, we'll, we'll get you something here. Um, I like him as a melee close range guy, so we'll, uh, might put a point or two into there. See what else we need. He He's actually surprisingly helpful with the knowledge stuff. It works out an, an awful lot. In some way, somehow, he kind of just makes it work. But he's uh, he's a barbarian, so I think he has enough points in mind. It's a little weird for the barbarian to be that intelligent. Uh, so let's give him a little bit of range combat. So he can have a bow or something. I don't know. But okay. Yag, Yagak. Oh, I think this means he wants to work for us. Yeah, I'm sorry, bud. I can't I can't fit you in. I just got a new person. Let me uh, serve this guy some goodies here. All right, we're off to a good start. Let's go over here. And you have to be at least somewhat near somebody for it to jump. So, so like earlier, this guy was like 95% and some guy over here was like 90%. But if I, if I gave it to him, it wouldn't have jumped to the next person. So you have to keep a couple of things in mind. Let's see. Morgul wants whatever this is, porridge. I wonder if they'll get mad at me for not having the stuff they want. Because I have stuff on the menu that I don't actually have right now. Ah, 70% chance and nothing. Okay. I wonder what this is. Is, is that like a role? Oh, that's a role for saying, you know, what they need to actually like it. And he rolled a 28 out of a 30 uh, requirement. D100. Okay. It's interesting. I didn't know that there was roles going into that, but this game is very role heavy. I should have just known that. I've got some news. Tell me more, Karamarv. Uh, Forever Young, level 4. If it's possible to rescue Alfred and Isabella, that still leaves the issue of his now being 50 years older near death. Visit Alchemist Flarg Blargan and see if he can create a potion of youth. Sure, I'm sure it'll be easy. Nobody's ever tried to do that before. Ingenious. Hey, I have this proposal I think you'll be interested in. Well, tell me more about it. I think that's Morgul. I don't know. Uh, your collection of heroes could use a ladder to anchor the young crew. A leader. I don't know why I said ladder. I don't know. I can't read today. Your talent scouts have identified four powerful new players on the scene. Uh, which should they choose? Top of her class, a wild card, a safe cracker, a hero's welcome. Um, I well, this one's blinking. A recent uh, graduate of Mage College, most promising wizard in nearly a decade. Combat and survival, social and combat. Social and mind. I need survival, I think. I don't have very much of. Combat and survival or survival and combat. Uh, I guess maybe this one. I guess. Maybe. It's a weapon master? Hmm. I don't know. For a second, I thought the weapon master went blacksmith. Don't ask me. And I was excited. I'm like, we're going to start making our own weapons, but apparently not. Famous weapon master Juliana Jaggedheart just arrived in port. Head to retail and recruit this hero for Impossible's whole for Impossible's Hole's crew before someone else snatches her up. This character has survival and combat skills. Okay, well I don't actually have room for her, I don't think. Yeah, I'm five out of five. I mean, I'll I'll do the quest, but then she'll just have to sit in my in my uh, tavern here not doing anything, maybe. Maybe I'll get rid of someone else. I don't know. Let's see how long we can get this happiness trail going. I'll go to that one. Yeah, 65. 55. All right, we maxed out. Got a little tavern mood, some reputation. I think our reputation has been uh, lackluster for a while lately. We missed so many, so many rolls last episode. It was kind of, kind of horribly bad. That's a Morgul one here. Ta time to take my skills to the next level. I agree, Morgul. Let's do it. Let's see, uh, fire made magic. I mean, you're already really, really good with combat here. I don't think we need to overemphasize that too much. Mind is important, and she's like a mage, so mindy things seem important to me. I don't know. Well, we'll at least put one into that. I don't know. I'll go crazy with that. Why not? 
If, if you're a fire mage without the world's most potent fire magic, then I think maybe you're slacking a bit. I don't know. Gurg Stone Branch. Well, let's give him, what's he want? Alvin Wine. There you go, buddy. Enjoy. I wonder how many AP we have left. I feel like we've been uh, in the tavern round a little while now. Uh, I was hoping we can max out. But, you know, we made 13 golden tips. That's something. Oh, we have a lot more AP left. I thought, like, we've been doing this for a while. Apparently not. Could I trouble you for a glass of the Ravenger, please? People like the Ravenger. 98%? I'll do the 97 first. Go there. Round the horn. I'll do that one. And uh, I want to do that one, but I won't. Oh, this is bad. Yeah, that, that was going to go bad, and I just knew it. This one is, you know, they has seeing stars. That generally means that, you know, if you give them anything else, they're going to pass out. And he's an important bridge right now where he lets us jump tables. It seems like you're always working. You should hire some help and take a night off once in a while. He does have survival. I'm not all that impressed, though. See, Grunson wants to talk? Or is it Ramsey? Ramsey, you're not even, like, on my team. I don't know why you want to talk so much. I've since retired and left that hectic life behind. I mo mostly work as a middleman now, matching up the right thieves to the right jobs. Okay, Ramsey. I mean, good for you, I guess. Like, am I crazy? Is he in my roster and I just don't remember him? Yeah, he's he's not. Why, why do you think I care, Ramsey? I don't, I don't care. I'm sorry, but I don't. Whoops, let me get out of this. Uh... Where's Amelia here? We need to unlock Amelia's stuff. Can I trouble you for an Elven Wine? Well, yes, you can. I was going to try to level her up, but apparently it didn't want to let me. Let's get a 95 over here. And we'll do that one. We'll jump over. He's, I'm surprised he didn't like fall over drunk. He, he's on the verge. All right, that was a good one. We're actually doing pretty decent with our rolls this time around. I was hoping to level up uh, Amelia, but there we go. She was always wanting something to drink, I guess. All right, close range, necromancy. I mean, you know, you're doing a necro thing already. I don't think we have to put more into that. A little bit more survival would be nice. I don't know how important Woodland's Mastery is, if I'm honest. But we have been sorely lacking in survival. I don't know. I don't know how, I mean, if, you, if you're if you a necromancer, how important is Woodland's Mastery to you? I mean, I really don't know. I'm going to throw it in there anyway, just because, why not? It sounds weird. Let's go with it. Sometimes I miss the sea. Not the terrifying sea monsters, though. Mom, okay. Good for you, bud. I don't really believe in sea monsters, but that was a thing way back in the day. Apparently. All right, that's everyone. Let's uh, last call it and get a... Yes, well, I just said end of the day. I don't know why you're... We have no AP left. What else are we going to do, game? What do you think? All right, let's see what we're going to do here. we got two quests we got to do here. Is there a doctor in the house? Forever young, a hero's welcome. I'm going to save the hero's welcome because I don't even have room in my uh, in my party right now. So let's do this one. It says we need close range combat. And I'm sure I have people who are good at that. Like, uh, what's the other one need? Like, just just to be sure. This one needs social, negotiate. And who has that? Edna has that? And Bump, maybe? Why is it green? It must have some kind of bonus or something. Okay, we'll put Edna on that. They have a good chance just by themselves. Well, at least somewhat decent chance. <laughs> Uh, who are we going to put with him? Somebody well-rounded, I guess. Um, I guess Grunson is pretty well-rounded. You can do that. They have a decent chance of uh, getting through things okay. Um, maybe, maybe consider one more person. Or maybe I'll just, like, actually choose the best people for it. Who knows? Let me negotiate. Who has high... Bump has high skills? And I'll just throw a million in there. And maybe we'll just do one quest this time around. 
yeah, I think it's okay with me. I don't want to spread myself out too thin and uh, keep failing things because I'm not a fan of failing. Uh, Forever Young. If it's possible to rescue Alfred and Isabella, that still leaves the issue of his now being 50 years older and near death. Visit Alchemist Fark Blargan and see if he can create a potion of youth. Okay, I feel like I read that a little while ago. But that's okay. I can read more, more than once. There's nothing like the start of a new adventure, Bump declares. I agree, Bump. Adventures are good. A finely dressed man with an ogre bodyguard interrupts the party on the road, claiming Amelia owes him a large debt. Why can't we just attack these people? It's like you're trying, you're trying to, you know, get money for nothing here. I, I can't think. Um, the words is escaping me for uh, trying to hustle somebody at any rate. Let's just beat them up. See, let's uh, let's balance everything because why not? Oh, we already got it. Somebody got a heroic roll. Bump with a heroic roll. Okay. Recalling the loan she owns the man, owes the man rather, Amelia negotiates a small extension, then convinces him to lend her a bit more. Sucker. Ha ha ha. Wow, that, that is uh, some pretty good smooth talking there. Edna feels uneasy and says, uh, guys, hold up. I have a bad feeling. Oh, is this like, and they take another step and people walk forward and the road explodes or something weird? Oh, that was a small roll. There we go. Grunson and Edna carried us through here. Edna, while unsure what just happened, feels confident they avoided something terrible. Okay, well, I, I guess sometimes you don't know what's going to happen if you avoid it, right? The heroes enter the lab of orc alchemist Flarg Blargan and immediately spot a mural of Mage Alyssa Bloodworth covering the, an entire wall. Flarg looks up from a jumbled stack of scrolls. Okay, I don't know what exactly we're rolling for here. We, we saw a picture. But okay. We beat the heck out of that roll, though. We, we looked at that picture like nobody's business. I'm not crying. You're crying. Flarg sniffles after they finish telling him the story of Isabella and Alfred. Fine, fine, I have just a thing. Have old Alfred chug this down and it'll be happily ever after. Okay. Apparently, that's as easy as it is to get the potion of youth. Who'd have thunk it? A flock of nether wings flies by. Okay, and apparently we need to outsmart them. I'm assuming they're like... Oh, we actually failed. I assume they're like bats or something. I don't know. Split up! Bump yells and sprints off in a random direction. The heroes run for cover as the low-flying netherwing swoops down and sprays the area with its foul, acidic breath. Grunson feels a little woozy. Grunson is now poisoned. Meh. Not a fan of being poisoned. Maybe you can sit in the infirmary and it'll go away or something. Who knows? It could happen. The heroes peek through a door into a makeshift laboratory and find a wizard staring back at them. You dare intrude on my experiments? The man bellows, yanking back a blanket covering what appears to be a poorly stitched together frog rabbit hybrid. Bunny ribbit, kill them! <laughs> We're gonna fight a bunny ribbit. Okay. Well, that that bunny ribbit don't know what hit him. We, we beat the heck out of that bunny ribbit. The bunny ribbit flicks out its tongue at Grunson, wrapping it around its wrapping it around his wrist. The barbarian yanks with his arm, sending the hybrid freak into a wall. You done? Grunson says. The wizard assures them that he is, and they continue on their way. Okay. Uh, Grunson beats up bunny ribbits, and we just go about our business. That's just how it goes. In the center of the path, a young, blindfolded girl sits cross-legged, twiddling her impossibly long fingers. Answer my riddle, she screeches, creep creeping the daylights out of the party members. Well, it's a good thing Grunson is here, because he magically gets all these riddles. Oh, he failed! Oh, we're in trouble. Well, yeah, we're in big trouble. Grunson failed us big time. He normally gets that. See, wrong. Please leave. Okay, well, you're the one who... Forced a riddle on us, lady, out of nowhere. Tonight, I'll have a warm hearth before me and a roof over my head, Bumpman says, as uh, Bump says, as Impossible's Hole comes into view. What more could a paladin want? 
Oh, an ale. Of course, ale. We forgot the ale. All right, another quest down. Hopefully the uh, long-fingered lady wasn't too important for the quest chain. We'll find out. But we got the potion of youth. I think that was the important bit, and uh, we kind of nailed that. And our supplies should be in, so we should actually be selling the barbecue rat and the uh, voodoo cookies now, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. We got them in. What's this mean? Reputation, reputation bonus. Down for not having voodoo doll cookies, maybe? Or maybe it's down to zero? You don't get it? I don't, I don't really know what that is. Uh, we can put Grunson in the uh, infirmary. There we go. And uh, he'll be poisoned for a couple of days, but that's okay. He'll live. You know, we'll just hold him back on an adventure or two. Did Amelia level up again? She did. Time to take my skills to the next level. Well, let's do it then. I think we definitely, I feel like we definitely need more social people. And I feel like we're pretty good with close combat. Somebody at least has something. Everyone has at least something. But yeah, look at our close combat compared to every other role. I mean, we definitely don't need any more close combat. And uh, she already has, I mean, I guess I'll add a couple more. Because our exploration, I mean, our uh, survival here is still so low. And the other one is social, which we're pretty low on. But apparently we can't invest any more points into it. That's unfortunate. Uh, let's go with Laura then. Okay. Let's see this guy over here. What's he want? All right, new random person. We'll give you a voodoo cookie. And Grunson. Morgul. I guess all our crew are kind of hanging out over there. We'll give him another whatever he wants. 70. I can't click him. There we go. The clicking difficulties were real, okay? I was trying as this was not happening. All right, let's see. Gr uh, Bump has something to say over here. Hey, I wanted to talk to you. My mother was a skilled warrior and my father handy with a bow, but the Nevikin poured out of the mountain by the thousands. Oh, so apparently your parents didn't quite make it. Sorry to hear that, buddy. Y Gag really wants to join us, but I really don't care. You'll thank me when you hear this. Tell me more. By dawn's early light, level four. With the dawn approaching, the heroes review their plan one final time as they pack up for a return trip to the Lost Menagerie. Okay, apparently we're going to be going back there. Let's do another round of uh, serving here. 95, that's a good one. Yeah, I'll do this one. See if we can make a jump over here or not. We have very low prospects. But we maxed it out. That's kind of surprising. I can't complain about that. Does he have another quest for us? You haven't heard, have you? Tell me more. A long shot. A well-dressed nobleman enters scroll in hand. The Ardtown Archery Co uh, Tournament is upcoming, and I was told adventurers can be in here. He says, looking around disappointedly at the shoddy interior. On the off chance anyone in this hovel is a capable archer, there's still openings available. I don't believe I have any particularly good archers, if I'm being honest. I could be wrong. Ramsey wants to talk to me yet again. He's giving me a quest? I don't even think it was a quest. Okay, I'll take a quest. Any simpleton can swing a blade, but the art of theory, thievery <laughs> requires a special touch says a weathered old man, casting a furtive glance around the tavern. If you have any such adventures in your employ, I have work available. The name's Ramsey Volk. Okay, Ramsey. I mean, I was kind of not expecting to get a quest there. But we got one. Hi hire? It's oh, yeah, it's a Gagak wanting to be hired again. This guy is always wanting to be hired over here. Is he going to tell me who he is now? Have you upgraded since the last time I was in? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I could be wrong. Things happen quickly, and I don't keep up with it all. 105% chance. Uh, that's good to see. Let's see if we can make the jump over here. Ugh. I'll do this one. Just because I wanted to make the jump over. Definitely not for the percentage. And we made it! And we got 23 golden tips. Maybe we can actually afford to get the... Uh, 
the uh, wine cellar soon. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, let me see. 95. We'll go with that one. The Ravenger. And we'll do the jump over here. See how many people we can jump over to. Well, that's disappointed. But stuff happens. I don't want to talk to Ramsey again. That dude talks too much. He's, he's kind of obsessed with telling me about himself. Like, I don't even know the guy. Yeah, that one. Give me a jump. There we go. He's happy. I, I think maybe that gives him a roll bonus. I could be wrong. Could be wrong indeed. Well, I think we're getting some good money here for once. Let's see what else we can do here. Ah, we'll, we'll start over here. Uh, let's see, 98. 90. And we'll move over here. Is that Amelia turning me down again? Darn it, Amelia. You've always given me such hard time with this. Uh, we have one more AP. Is there anything pertinent we should be doing? I don't, I don't think so. There's no, like, sorry things going on or anything. We'll just finish serving. Hopefully we finish on a good note here and get a full chain bonus. Amelia didn't screw us over for once. That's always nice. He's happy. I'll go to him. There we go. Maximum service. It's almost like we know what we're doing. But we know better. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. That's the end of the day. All right, guys. We're going to call it here. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Epic Tavern. And I'll see you guys next time. Uh, take it easy. Bye-bye.